Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to go through some of the settings that you should change whenever you update your BIOS, or maybe you've built your PC for the first time and you're not entirely sure how to set up your BIOS settings to get the best performance, and also basically just to get things to actually work kind of at all. So, this is a question which we get asked an awful lot on our Discord and also in the YouTube comments. So obviously do keep these coming if you've got any further questions, but hopefully this video will serve as somewhat of a guide to set up your BIOS. Now this is specifically towards the AMD AM5 platform. This is going to be using our ASUS B650 Tough Gaming Wi-Fi. I don't remember which board it was then. Uh, so obviously your boards may be slightly different. You may have different settings, but I'll try and generalize it as much as I can. It should give you kind of like a rough idea of what you should be doing. Now, if you're using Intel, especially with DDR5, then your settings may be slightly different as well. We will be looking into the AM5 DDR5 settings in a little bit more detail because it is a little bit more, um, well, fussy, I should say, and it does require a little bit of fine tuning. So with all that said, let's go over to the computer and uh, let's make a start because already I can hear my fans like crazy because the fans aren't set up yet. So this here is a computer, strap in, this could be a long one. So here is our uh, desktop. So I've actually just done a BIOS flash, but potentially if you've reset your CMOS or you've got a motherboard for the first time in your new build, you may experience a screen like this. So we've got options here. Uh, please enter setup to recover BIOS settings. When RAID configuration was built, ensure to set SATA configuration to RAID mode. So yeah, if you've got a RAID configuration, which I don't think many people will these days, but potentially you do have to bear those things in mind. Uh, essentially what we want to do here is to press F1 to enter setup or to run setup. So we've been pretty lucky here that it does appear that the fan profiles have kicked in from our previous installation. So that's great, but we will be taking a look at those as well. So just to give you a brief overview. So this is the default screen that you're more likely to see. Obviously, depending on your brand, your screen may look significantly different. It will have some similarities, but yeah, don't expect yours to look exactly like this unless you've got the same motherboard or at least from the same range of motherboards. So it gives you all your basic details here. Something to look at straight away is look at your CPU temperature. If your CPU temperature looks considerably higher than this, potentially your CPU cooler is not installed correctly. Maybe if you're using a water pump, an AIO type cooler, maybe you've got the headers in the wrong places, so the pump's not running. So this is the first thing to check. Just check your motherboard temperature and your CPU temperatures are within kind of normal tolerances. If you're not entirely sure what the normal tolerances are, please let me know in the comments section or for a quicker answer, join our Discord and I'll try and answer those as best I can. Generally, depending on the setup, anywhere between 30 and probably about 45 degrees should be normal for most processors. Anything significantly over and above that, I would suggest there is something wrong. Obviously, if there's considerably less, then you've got a pretty decent cooler. So that is the first thing to check. Just make sure your temps on the CPU are okay before you go too far. Next things we've got here, so we've got our DRAM status. Currently, Expo is disabled. Now, Expo is the AMD equivalent of XMP. Potentially, the motherboard that you've got may support both XMP and Expo if you're on AMD. If you're on Intel, it'll be XMP only. So just check your RAM and see what it's actually capable of. You will find that in the Expo settings, there will probably be an option, either enabled or disabled, and you may potentially have more than one option available. But do set your Expo to enabled or your XMP to enabled. That will be meaning you get the best out of your RAM. So that's a pretty simple one. The next one is going to be fan profile. Potentially your fans are going nuts. I would suggest as well, some motherboards will give you some sort of visual display of the speed of the fans, such as we've got here. So just make sure that your fan speeds look normal and they're not fluctuating wildly. If you've got a fan connected to a specific header on your motherboard and you're not getting a read in, it could be because the fans aren't set up correctly. Maybe you've got a three pin header or a four pin header on your fan. So you do need to change that. So let's go in fan control and get that set up now. Most motherboards will have some form of tuning utility. So it will basically run the fans to their highest and lowest settings and then give you an approximation of what it can do. If for any reason yours hasn't got that, you can set them all manually. So for our CPU fan and all the individual chassis fan headers, you may have more than this, you may have less. Again, depending on the motherboard, it may be different. Now, normally it's gonna be set to auto detect, but you can choose between DC mode so DC mode is going to be for fans with three physical pins and PWM mode is for fans with four physical pins. So if you're not entirely sure, ideally check on the box that the fans came in 
Otherwise, look at the physical connector and you should see that there is either four pins or three pins actually in the plug that attaches to the motherboard. So three pins are DC mode, four pins are PWM. Most modern fans these days tend to be PWM. So if you want to, you can go through and select PWM mode for all of your chassis fan and CPU fan headers. I think I probably have done that already. One to be a little bit more considerate of is the one for your AIO pump. So if you're using some form of water cooling, depending on the manufacturer, the AIO pumps can be either three pin DC or they can be PWM. Fortunately, most of the modern ones tend to start being PWM, but do make sure you get the right one. So if you're using a water cooler pump, which has a three pin, definitely set it to DC mode. If it's a four pin, you can set it to PWM mode. Now, in this particular instance, we don't actually have one attached, so it doesn't make a difference, so we can leave it to auto detect, but definitely check that your AIO pump settings are correct. Now, in these sections, you can also adjust your profile for your curves. We've done a dedicated video on that, so I won't go into too much detail, but essentially you can go into manual and you can move these sliders around to get your desired fan speeds, depending on noise, temperature, etc. When you're happy in there, you can click on apply and then we can come out of there. So that's the, the real basics. So, so other things to be uh, considering is your boot priority. So if you've got a single drive in your computer, a single M.2 or SSD, then that makes life a lot easier. So generally you're just gonna see one drive in this particular section. If you've got multiple drives in there, potentially you might need to move them around and you can do that by just by dragging them. There's also another section deeper into the bus. You can change those as well, but just make sure that the one at the top here or your primary boot drive is going to be your Windows drive, your main operating system drive. You may also see other disks. So we've got a USB drive installed. Something else to be considerate of is if you have older drives that you're putting into a newer machine, newer machines are going to be using the UEFI standard. Older drives could possibly be CSM or compatibility mode. So if you don't see your older drives in this section or in the drive menu, you may need to change from UEFI to CSM mode. In order to do that, a lot of things you can do, you can actually search for these things. So let's head over into the next part now and I'll show you how that's done. So in advanced mode, we've got a lot more flexibility and a lot more things we can do. Also, you have the search facility, which on this particular board is going to be F9 key for a hotkey, so you can type in things here. So if you're looking for a specific term, so let's type in CSM and click OK. So there we go, CSM or launch CSM. Currently it's disabled, so if we wanted to see older drives which aren't visible, you can enable CSM to see some of those older drives. That is gonna be some of minority of people, but potentially you can do it from there. And any other settings you need to find, you can search there as well, just to bring them up a little bit quicker. So previously we turned on XMP. Now for AMD systems specifically, we do need to go in a little bit deeper with this. So in this particular instance, we're gonna go into AI Tweaker. And what we wanna do is to go down to find some memory settings. And these are the settings that you really wanna be careful of for AM5 systems with DDR5. So there's an option for power down enable and also memory context restore. Now we've done a separate video on this as well. So if you, if you have a slow boot time with your DDR5 system, context restore will speed that up. So we definitely want to have that enabled. Now, automatically on this particular board, it's actually turned on power down enable because those two are kind of linked together. So if you don't have power down enable turned on or enabled, you may find you get blue screens of death because the memory is trying to do something which it can't do without that other setting enabled. So those two are really important, less important for Intel systems, but if you have got the option there, if you want it to boot slightly faster, then you can turn on power down enable and memory context restore, and you should be all good. Other things you may want to do, so such as your uh, TPM or trusted computing. So if you're trying to install Windows 11, you will need that to be actually enabled. Generally, most motherboards now, if you update the BIOS, it's going to do that as a default. If for some reason you want to use an older operating system that doesn't support TPM, then you can disable it in there. Again, just look for device security or TPM. Some other things you can do for the actual setup of the CPU. This is kind of basic stuff, but you may or may not need this. Generally, it's going to be set up to the best options anyway. But if for some reason you don't want things like the virtual machine to be enabled, you can disable that here. If you have it disabled, there are some security features in Windows 11 that won't work. 
uh, potentially you may find some games won't launch and vice versa. So you may need to find your SMV or virtual machine or secure virtual machine and either toggle that enabled or disabled. Something else which is really important as well, so if you're uh, using a graphics card, which I'm guessing a lot of you will be, something which is actually really necessary, make sure that above 4G decoding is enabled and also resizable bar support. Now you can tell how important resizable bar is these days because it's one of the main things generally on the top of most bosses, it'll be on the front page. Uh, it's very important to enable that, especially if you're using an Intel graphics card. So make sure that is enabled or at least check it to see if it is. So other things we can do in here, so we've got the boot options, again, as we talked about a little bit earlier, so we've got our CSM or compatibility support module. You've also got secure boot, which you can turn on or off, so that might be useful. Your boot configuration, so in there you can choose wherever you've got number lock, all those kinds of things, wait for BIOS, probably won't need that. But this one here, if you've got more than one drive selected, so your boot option one, we've got the Windows boot manager, but maybe if you've got additional drives, you can choose which one. So if you're finding your system won't boot or you can't boot to your blank drive to do an installation, then you might want to change these. You have a secondary option as well. So if it can't boot from the first drive, you've got a fallback, which normally you'd set to either disabled or like a CD-ROM drive or a USB. The choice is effectively up to you. You should find here boot override as well. So if you want to boot to a specific device just to, as a one-time deal, so say you've got Windows on a USB drive, you can click on that and then the next time it will boot from the USB drive, but afterwards it will boot to your normal Windows drive as selected. Uh, something else to be wary of as well, if things like your Wi-Fi or your Bluetooth aren't working or some other devices, you can go into your onboard devices configuration. Again, this might be called other things in various motherboards, so you might have to do a little bit of hunting around, but you should find a section for things like your HD audio. So if you want your audio to work, you'll need that enabled. Same for Wi-Fi, that is set to enabled, and the Bluetooth controller, that is set to enabled. Generally, with most modern bosses, these will be set to be on as a default, but if for some reason it isn't, you can find these relatively easily. Again, if you're lost, click on the search button and just type in either audio or Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, that sort of thing, you should find it quite easily. Another thing while we're in this section, you will find that sometimes LED lighting is also in this section as part of your kind of onboard devices. So if you are somebody who wants all of your RGBs off or at certain times you want them to switch off, this is a good place to look for as well. So it tells you there, LED lighting, when the system is in a working state, you want them all on, but you can choose to have them stealth mode, Aurora only or Aurora off, but I like mine on. Also, you've got the option for when the system is in sleep, hibernate or soft off modes, you can choose whether the onboard LED is on or the LED is off. Again, we've done a separate video on this, going into slightly more detail. You're more than welcome to check that out as well. You've also got the option for turning on and off your onboard LAN. For some reasons, you may want to disable that, but that is in there also. And the next one is going to be somewhat of a uh, optional. So this is something you might want to do to get the best performance or to get slightly better performance. So if we go into the AI tweaker, again, your motherboard may have something different, but if there's any options for performance enhancement, you can go ahead and enable those should you wish to. Currently, this is set to disabled. You can turn it on as well. You've got the core performance boosts and things like that. For AMD systems, you've got the precision boost overdrive. So we can click onto that and there's settings you can go into in here. I always like to use the curve optimizer myself personally, and you can go in here, turn this from auto. There'll be various options here. I'm gonna choose all cores and you can choose a negative offset and you have a scalar there. So you can put in a specific value. For this particular processor, I know that it can do 30 very easily. So we can go ahead and type that in there and hit enter. So this is a, a negative offset. So this is just gonna bring the processor down a little bit in terms of temperatures and all that kind of stuff. Most AM5 CPUs will do negative 30 relatively easily. If for some reason it won't, you can drop it down to 20. You also got the option as well. So if you are somebody who wants to make your system not run as particularly hot, then you've also got the platform thermal throttle limit. Now this will be on AMD and it will also be on Intel systems. So you can put a manual thermal throttle limit in there. Again, depending on your processor and what you've got, you can choose what you want. Uh, generally for this, I would say leave it set to auto. 
wait till the system's stable and then you can do a little bit further tweaking. But for now, I think that should be more than adequate to get your system up and running. Of course, if you want to, you can go in and tweak the system a little bit more later, but I would suggest for a new BIOS or for a new system, don't go pushing the system too much in terms of performance. Make sure it's stable first and then you can go ahead and tweak at a later date. And of course, when it's all done and dusted, don't forget to go in and click on save and exit. Hopefully your system will reboot. If for some reason it doesn't, you may need to obviously change your settings slightly. If you're not too sure how to do that, you can just remove the BIOS battery. Again, we've done a separate video on how to reset your CMOS. So I'll link that in the video description as well, just in case you need it. So hopefully this video has been interesting and uh, possibly useful to you. Hopefully it answers uh, some of the common questions we tend to get on this channel. But as always, if there's more questions you have or you want a little bit more in-depth help, then please reach out to us on our Discord channel, which is free to join. Or you can leave a comment in the comment section below. And also while you're there, a like on the video would be very much appreciated, as would a sub if you like this type of thing and you want to see more videos like this in your inbox. So I think that's going to wrap this one up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.